Coming up on the program, it's time to harvest our pumpkins. We'll show you how we grow them and when to know when to harvest them. And we're going to look at some of the options that we have for next year in our garden. It won't be the same for your garden, but it'll give you some ideas of what you can look for in yours. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by For all your non-GMO, heirloom, organic, vegetable, flowers, and herb seeds, visit dollarseed.com. Sue Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil, retains moisture and adds nutrients, which equals less watering. Available in Sioux organic seed starting kits, pre-filled trays and pots, bag and bulk. Visit SiouxCompost.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind and soil hose and filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew, 100% organic. Visit MinerTea.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We're in the backyard of the sister-in-law's house and we're gonna harvest these pumpkins. Now we've got two pumpkins here. I got niece Sarah here. Sarah, this one's gonna be your pumpkin, isn't it? Small. Uh, yeah, one's well, gonna be yours. Now, small pumpkin. you want to be the small pumpkin? We'll have Danny have the big pumpkin? Yeah. Okay, now the way we grew these pumpkins was simply out of a bag of certified leaf compost from Sue's. We cut the top open, I threw a bunch of seeds in there because they were old seeds, and we went ahead and let them grow. And you can see how it's, it's vined out all over the yard. And a couple of, uh, about four weeks ago, about a month ago, we trimmed back some of this in order to put more focus on the growth of the pumpkins rather than more growth on the vine. We, took off any flowers that potentially had pumpkins on them. So when to harvest your pumpkins? Well, as the days get cooler, they're going to get riper. And obviously when to harvest them is based on when you plant them. Planting them at the correct time in the spring will ensure you to have pumpkins at fall time or Halloween time. Now we're not certain, we're, we're probably going to paint these pumpkins up and not carve them out and then we can actually use them as food later on. So. We want to harvest these. Sir, you want to come over here and we'll harvest this one? All right. So you want... Uh, all right, here, I'll let you... Whoop. All right, so we want to harvest the pumpkins when they've got a little... You can harvest them when they're a little green. They're going to get ripe over, over the next couple of days, a couple of weeks here. But you want to leave the stem. So here, Sarah, we're going to cut the stem right there off. You want to leave a little of the stem because if you just go ahead and rip it off, you're going to open this up for uh, to dry out or start to rot before you're ready for it. So that's, look at that, look at that pumpkin. Hold, hold it, you got it? Yeah, hold it. There you go. That's a good little pumpkin there. It's heavy. It's heavy, yeah. So that's one of the pumpkins. Now we're going to harvest the other one. You want to, want to set that one right there. All right. Now this is the bigger of the two. All right. Now it was laying on this side, that was the bottom, and we gently rotated it around just to try to get more, um, try to get it not so flat, but it really doesn't make a difference. Now that's a decent sized pumpkin there. We're going to put it on the scale and see what it's going to weigh here in a minute. But again, all of this stemmed from one bag of certified leaf compost. We punctured holes in the bottom, cut the top open, and, and crammed a bunch of seeds in there. Now with the vines here, it's the powdery mildew issue on these vines. You don't want to compost this. You want to go ahead and throw this in the street for your municipality to pick up. You can put it on a burn pile, throw it in your trash, because you don't want to compost this powdery mildew because it can potentially reinduce itself and in, introduce itself into your garden come next year if, uh, if everything works out just right. And we don't want to introduce any more diseases into the garden than what we need. Yeah, Danny, you got a nice pumpkin there. Yeah. And also now pumpkins, 
I'm pulling this vine up because we're going to get rid of it. Pumpkins are one of them vine crops that actually put roots on as it grows across the, the yard. So that is also another way of adding nutrients in addition to the bag of compost. So you don't need a whole field to grow pumpkins. This is a small backyard. We got two nice pumpkins out of it just by growing it in compost and in a bag of compost. So it works really well. So we're going to go ahead and weigh this one and see what we have. Okay, so we've weighed the big one here and it's running right at 18 pounds. So that's a decent sized pumpkin there. Let's see what the small one. This one's going to be about 8 to 10. Uh, two, four, about 7 pounds there. So two decent pumpkins, very nice pumpkins that we don't have to go buy for Halloween or Fall Festival and we have something for the kids to decorate. So next year, think about how you can grow pumpkins in your little garden, in your yard, and you won't have to go buy them in the fall. Growing in containers is a great way to expand your growing area whether you have ground to grow in or not. As we get later on in the season, we get to reap the rewards that we have planted in early spring. This is one of our, plant, our, our eggplants, one of the Black Beauties. Now this is in a root maker, and the nice thing about this, well, one of the things we've been doing is we put it in a reservoir to where it can have adequate moisture throughout the day and, and when it needs it. We've got several small, well, we've got two small Black Beauty eggplants here, and then we have one that is large enough that we want to harvest. Now, with eggplants, you can get them as big and let them grow as big as you want to. We choose not to do that for a variety of reasons, and one being as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, they can get tougher in taste and a little more uh, um, chewier. So we're going to harvest it, uh, the largest one here. But one of the things before we harvest, I do want to do some maintenance on this plant. And all I'm going to be doing here is trimming some of these leaves that are as touching the soil just to get more air circulation at the bottom of the plant. Now we do have several more blooms on this plant. So this plant will grow and produce all the way up until frost. The stem is very thick, which is a good sign of a healthy plant. And leaves that are discolorish, uh, discoloring, I'm going to go ahead and cut off just to get rid of. Because one of the things that happens on a plant is a plant senses uh, injury or disease. So what it will do is begin to put energy into trying to correct that problem. By just cutting the leaf off, it will put the energy in the rest of the plant instead of trying to heal the bad leaf. And let's see, is this one? That one's okay. All right, so one thing here when it comes to eggplants, we do want to cut the eggplant off because it has a thick stem. If you start trying to pull it, you're going to end up snapping it, ripping part of the plant off, or damaging the actual eggplant itself. So that is a very pretty palm size black beauty eggplant. So you can grow eggplants in a container just as you would in the ground. Growing in containers is a great way to expand your growing area, whether you have ground to grow in or not. So tomatoes, majority of tomatoes, the, not, the indeterminate tomatoes are vines, and this is a perfect example. This is a row of tomatoes that I pulled from other portions of the garden that were volunteers that came up from last year's fruit dropping on the ground. Now all of these are cherry varieties because you can see the cluster there. We're getting late in the fall but these may ripen. Now the other thing uh, you see here is just a mass wall of tomatoes. Tomatoes are best if we put them in a cage and get them vertical so we can get air circulation and lack on diseases which we didn't do here. But I wanted to see what kind of what kind of tomatoes we get here as well as if the volunteers would actually take off to maturity. Another thing you'll notice here as these are vined across the ground you're going to see white root-like uh, things coming out of the vines. And that's right, those are roots. Anytime the uh, vine touches a moist area, it's going to put on roots. 
and try to grow into the ground. And this is another thing, if you have tomatoes in ground or containers or raised beds, and you start seeing a lot of little like warts on the bottom of the tomato plants, this is a indication of it being very moist and the plant is going to try to put roots on even though there's no soil to, be, uh, to, to grow into. So we always wanna to try to get these up off the ground, but in this instance, they are producing relatively decent on the cherry varieties, just cluster after cluster after cluster of them. So tomatoes all summer long and into fall is a very practical and purposeful thing. So we're on the back side of the large garden and it's uh, and in prepping, it's always preparing for what may or may not happen. In gardening, we need to prepare for what we're planning on doing for next year so we're ready to go when the time is, is right to plant. Now, uh, we're, we've got a number of beds here on the back side. We've got 10 beds total, and they're anywhere, they're about three and a half to four foot wide by 10 foot long. Now, we've noticed in the past year or two years, the first two beds here we know a couple of things. We know beans grow really good back here in partial shade. We know lettuce grows incredibly well back here. And there's a few other crops that do relatively okay. So right now our intentions are eyeballing what we've got going on. We do have weeds, but I'm looking at the production of the plants that we have. So initially what we're gonna do next year is we're gonna take bed 24, bed 23, and make beans in both of them. Pole beans, bush beans, whatever we have available. We may have to build trellises, obviously, for the pole beans, but that's going to be the utilization of those two beds, regardless of what else we do. This bed here, we're going to most likely utilize it as a lettuce and kale bed. So those could, both items could go in very, very early in the spring. The bed here that we recently planted a cover crop on we're probably gonna do tomatoes in it. And the reason being tomatoes, and partial shade back here, and that partial shade is about, well, realistically, it's not really partial shade because the sun goes behind the tree there at a little past noon. So you're getting every bit of six to eight hours of sunlight. And the reason I say tomatoes back here is because we do have volunteer tomatoes and we've harvested a number of red ones off of these and we've done nothing to these plants. So if we would take care of these plants, then we, as we do with the other ones, we know we can get good production back here. This bed here, this is gonna be the bed that's uh, most likely gonna go in peas because the soil is not as wonderful as it needs to be. We've got two little Brussels sprout plants here and we've got some kale there. So the peas will fix their own nitrogen, which will allow them to produce what they need and grow properly. Here was the pea bed that we had this past year, did really, really well. So what we're gonna begin doing here in the next two to three weeks is preparing the soil for sweet corn. We had sweet corn in the bed that's got the compost on it now, did phenomenal. We got about a good dozen to almost two dozen ears of solid corn. We understand what we're doing. We understand how the soil needs to be built. So we're gonna take that knowledge and utilize it in this bed. In addition, the bed that had the corn in it this year, I've spoke about this on the program, we're gonna start revitalizing and renewing the soil there and plant corn in that same location. I know in the books it says don't do that, but I know that we can make that happen again next year as we have this year. So that's just some of the things that we, this is kind of the poorest area of the garden back here, but we can take the crops that we know that will do very well and that are doing well now, shuffle them amongst the beds, replant them and utilize this area much more efficiently than we have in years past. This obviously is not a footprint of what your particular garden is, but it will give you some options and some thoughts of what you can start looking at now for how you want to reutilize re the garden that you're currently growing in. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joey Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.